it is the first day of the readathon and not much progress has been made. Uh, I, I think I'm going to start Black Ghosts tonight when I get home. It is non-fiction about uh, black people living in China and how that is. Um, it sounds really interesting and I started it last year but then I saw there was the audiobook available in the library as well and I was like we're gonna go with that one. The first book of the New Renaissance has been finished. It was not Black Ghosts, which I haven't actually started. It was in Morningstar Shadow, which is a short story collection in the uh, Dominion of the Fallen series by Alec de Baudar. Um, it's one of my favourite series and I haven't been able to finish it for that reason because I don't want it to be over. And I was really anxious about this one because of that and also because I kind of fell in love with Morningstar when I read the first book. He is so mysterious and fascinating and it's honestly kind of enthralling in a way. And so I was really not worried about this one. I didn't want it to lose that. I didn't want too much information about Morningstar. And thankfully, it didn't give me too much. I wasn't expecting as many cameos, but it felt right that we got them. Uh, the first, there are three of them, three short stories, and they all kind of deal with different parts of his reign during the war, and in the aftermath and the first is my favourite because the first deals with the fall and there's just something about Bodard's writing which is so beautiful and I really the way it talks about that kind of gaping yawning hole that the fallen have for the city that they can't remember except for possibly Morningstar that was so compelling and I feel like it's it has been a while since I've read um, The House of Shattered Wings but it felt like such a wonderful insight into him without giving too much away Okay, so fingers crossed the audio is not too janked as I try and reorganise my shelves. Um, I am currently reading two books for the New Winathon. The first is Dragon Hoops by Jing Lin Yang. Apologies for my pronunciation. I have liked his stuff before. I wasn't aware it was non-fiction, um, but I started it and was it's not like a bad art style, it's just a very bland one to me and it's very kind of straightforward and I don't know, I think it will get somewhere because we've mostly been in setup but I kind of wanted a little bit more, a little bit quicker. I am, I am impatient, I will admit. Um, and then the second one, of course, was uh, Black Ghosts by New Sarah Wiwa. Uh, it is the audiobook because I started the ebook last year and I thought, why do this when I can listen to it? It's really interesting. It is, it's about black people living in China, how that's like, we're kind of. God. Okay, so I can't remember what province it's in, but it is really interesting seeing the community that's been built there and first impressions were not great, but <laughs> I'm not talking about me reading it because I've, I've loved it, the book since I started it, but yeah. Okay, so that was not a good idea. We're going to leave that. 
Okay, so one last thing. Life and Afterlife in Ancient China, edited by Jessica Rawson. I am... Oh, this isn't on my TBR, and this isn't on... This isn't one of the books I added to Storygraph. But if I have time, which I very much doubt that I have, I'm going to try for this one as well. So review and vlog obligations are now filled. I'm free to read what I want, when I want. Unfortunately, Black Ghosts, the library alone <laughs> ran out. Um, and it's not going to come back until, I think, next month. So that is out. But there is a YouTube video, I think an interview that the author did, that I will check out later. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to pick up A Magic Steeped in... No, that's not what it's called, is it? A Magic Steeped in Poison? It's the Book of Tea Geology by Judy Island. We are going out though, because I'm doing a hot pot night for my friends and I need to get some stuff. Oh shit, it's signed! Also, can I just say that I love when books are that kind of sticky. Oh gosh, I... I'm really loving a magic steeped in poison. I, I'm going a lot slower with it than I thought I would because uh, I've been taking down notes and copying out quotes that I really like. Um, most important though, I went to the back because Shenong Shi being like the tea magic masters, I was like, okay, what does this mean? Is there a glossary at the back? There is, and I am delighted. It does not tell you what Shenong means. Um, but and but I'm glad there is a glossary at the back. I'm also going to leave it because I I did have a flick through it and it mentioned something about tombs, uh, which is catnip to me. The tomb robbing genre is my favorite, and I don't want to spoil myself for anything else. Um, I'm really. I don't think the writing itself is particularly standout, stylistically, I mean, um, but I like this description of her sister who's sick, uh, eyes glimmering wide, hair a tangle around her head, a deer wearing human skin, it's just, it just hits that level of evocative for me. Um, but speaking of like meanings, I love that she was named for this world's version of Chang'e, which is... But also, there is a deep cut, because um, her necklace symbolises the three souls, and it you don't usually see that. Um, here in, like, the UK, our dominant religion was Christianity. Different times, you know, we had Catholicism and Protestantism, uh, and lots of others, Quakers, but they're not... Okay, so they, they are quite different kinds of Christianity, but to go to China, it was quite... I feel like it was quite a thing when you had Taoism and this whole ancestor worship and then Buddhism came in with reincarnation and I don't think through ancient history I don't think one really triumphed over the other I think they were both pretty influential and so the way that it was kind of reconciled is a really interesting and something that I don't think people really know outside of the country. I know I'm rambling at this point, but it's, it is delighting me. All of my best laid plans. Up in smoke, I forgot this is packing day and we're going to be away tomorrow.
Um, so I will finish the book and it's fantastic. I also want to kind of quickly detour. I usually reread one of Michelle Kahn's A Romantic Chinese Fairy Tales. They're all under 40 pages, so it's fine. Uh, but we're going to do that. But I wanted to point out something else uh, about this. One thing that I like but also annoys me is uh, she's called Tubadze, which is clearly an insult, but it's not included in the corner at the back, and I am nosy. The second is I think this dude was just introduced with an idiom describing like the way that he looks, and it was in English. Uh, in the sentence after that, so I know what it means, but I've never seen that in any other, like, Chinese fantasies that I've read. Guys, this book is such catnip. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. I recently wrote about cozy fantasy and how it is a genre that I want to read but I'm not entirely sure exists and East Flows the River is one of the examples that I gave of a book that I consider cozy fantasy and I stand by that but rereading it now there is kind of a melancholy throughout it that I'd forgotten about like I said I still stand by it but yeah so I did not reread all three of them. Uh, I went for Golden Jasper, which is the shortest. And I think, because it's usually like a yearly reread, I think they're all kind of linked up, which kind of is exciting and also makes me a little bit sad because I think these were all published quite close to one another, like a year, and then no more. And I don't know how much more you could kind of extrapolate or build on from these. I'm happy if it's just the three of them. I would love more. Um, East Flows of River is definitely the most fairy tale like of them. Golden Jasper is the funniest. So something else I wanted. Oh yes, the I think because East Flows the River is about a weaver maiden, I always associated it with a double seventh festival. But the kind of author <laughs> acknowledgements, comments at the back, talk about New Year's and how, you know, it's New Year's celebrations are big and loud and then it kind of ends with the Lantern Festival, which is a lot more quiet of an affair. I should note, I feel that it's actually 21st that's the Lantern Festival. We are ending today, I think, because it's Yushe, which is rain, water, literally, but I think kind of more aptly translated as spring rain. I don't think I will finish A Magic Steep and Poison today, unfortunately, but I want to get, because fandom is a weird thing, and one of the characters that has been like most prominent in fandom spaces that I've seen is, oops, is this guy and I have no idea who he is uh, I think it does mention his name the artist is my G this is from tumblr but I think this person is more active in pillow fort uh, yeah and I would like to get as far as meeting this guy if possible <laughs> 